what I'm going to do with him. Don't know what I'll do without him. <laughs> but, Talk to you to outrun me. I didn't know. But uh, I'm thankful to be here. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I I was just telling my husband, coming to church tonight, I said, uh, my heart goes out to people that are not really able, not really physically able to come to the house of God. Because I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't come to the house of God. But God knows he would He would strengthen me to give me the grace, what I would need. But um, Brother Clifton the other night, I told him I couldn't find either of the songs that had on my heart the first time. <laughs> Sunday night, I think it was, and I couldn't find either song. Well, I wanted to sing Accepted in the Beloved. Now, whether you've heard it, but it's a wonderful song, wonderful words, but I don't think that's what God wants me to sing, and I'm not going to sing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a little uh, song in one of Amy Carmichael's books called Whispers of His Power, and if you've been around me a long time or a short time, short time, whatever time it is, you'll know I, I talk about her quite frequently because as a young Christian, I read a lot of her books and I know I call her my spiritual mother, or my mentor, whatever you want to call her. She's that to me. She's home with the Lord. She's been with the Lord since the early 1950s or so. But uh, this was a little chorus uh, that she had written it was not a music form, it was just like a poem form, and uh, there was no music. So I just loved it so much, I asked the Lord to give me whatever it's supposed to be to go with it. And this is what I came up with, so if you don't like it, talk to the Lord about it. <laughs> okay, but the thought is from uh, 2 Chronicles 6.10, it says, The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. And this is what this says. Thou hast performed the word that thou hast spoken, guided our steps and shown us what to do. Never, O oh Lord, a word of thine's been broken. Thou art the truth, and we have proved thee true. Now that's it. And so if you didn't like it, just tell me later. <laughs> but another song on my heart, and I think it's the day we live in because the Lord told me this evening as I was preparing my heart to come here to this place that this is the song. When my soul was disturbed with sorrow, when my heart was so burdened with sin, Jesus opened his arm of mercy yes, and he tenderly took me in. There is peace in the time oh. of sorrow. There is peace in the midst of the storm. There is peace, though this world be raging in the shelter of his arms. There are storms that we all encounter. Do not fear, they will do you no harm in the Lord. You will find protection in the shelter of his arms. Amen. Yeah. Told Sister Terry to pray for me. I have never had a week like this with my sinuses and drainage, and my throat's really bad tonight. So pray for me. Though the world all around be raging, and it's filled with many alarm. Trust in Jesus and he'll, oh, he'll keep you in the shelter of his arms. There is peace in the time <coughs> of sorrow. There is peace in the midst of 
the storm. There is peace, <coughs> though this world be raging <coughs> in the shelter of his arms. Amen. You know, um, uh, I have a little story to tell, because I want Brother Darrell to tell a little story. I have to tell the story first. Uh, some years back, I don't know who Brother he might not even remember it. I might have to tell him about this story, but it's about the checker pants. Brother Darrell, you still remember that story? Can you tell it tonight? Sometime? Sure. Okay. That was a request. But my story is this. No matter what the storm is, and you know, we, we were in Chattanooga area for 14 years and uh, raised some boys there. And, uh, one of them graduated from high school before we left there. And uh, uh, my brother there said that about, you know, looking in the cushions, and under the cushions of the couch and the sofa, find a change to buy a loaf of bread. Well, I've been there, we've been there. Uh, when our two older boys uh, were old enough to walk to the little corner store, uh, we did that. We got enough money to buy a jar of peanut butter. Yeah, there you go. And uh, it was from glass. You know, just glass, now it's all plastic. <laughs> but uh, they walked up to the little corner store and got that jar of peanut butter, got right in front of the house. You know what happened? They dropped it on the sidewalk. Broke all to shatter. We had no peanut butter. But I said, boys, don't cry. It's okay. We have bread and we have jelly. We'll make a jelly and bread sandwich. That's what we had. But about two weeks ago, our oldest son Mark was with us a couple of days. To tell you how that, that affects children's lives. They learn they can trust the Lord too. He's 60, almost 60. Next month, Mark will be 60. We were sitting in a den talking, and he said, Mom, I'll never forget the jar of peanut butter <laughs> and what you said. Sure. He'll never forget that as long as he lives. And so, when you just have a few pennies and you need a jar of peanut butter, go buy a plastic jar. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. even create a five dollar bill and gave it to us one yeah. time for gas. Uh, amen. Mm -hmm. Bless him, uh, Lord. Help him. The story she's referring to is <clears throat> we were having a real uh, difficult time financially and uh, of course we had had five children in the home at the time and and uh, I began to notice, I don't know why I didn't notice it before then, but I noticed that Daryl, my oldest boy, wore the same pants every day. He had a pair of ugly checkered pants. He'd wear them during the day, my wife would wash them at night, he'd get up and wear them the next day. And uh, so I called the kids into the living room and I said, uh, kids, I said, now let me tell you something. I said, God's a prayer answering God. I said, he's promised over and over and over to answer our prayers. But he doesn't put any restrictions on it as far as you gotta be married and have children or Got to be a deacon or a preacher. I said, uh, the prayer promises are for children as well. So what I want y'all to do, I want you to ask the Lord for some uh, clothing that you need. I want you to name the color. I want you to name the size. And you just tell the Lord what you need. If you want a four or five items, you, you ask him for those four or five items. And so they did. They got down in the little floor there and they begin to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, I need a shirt, I need a pair of pants, I need a skirt, I need whatever. And uh, and and so it wasn't long, I don't remember exactly how long, it wasn't long, two or three days maybe, and and I went out to the car, and to this day I have no idea who placed them in my car, but in the back seat of the car were uh, four or five large paper bags. And the kids wanted to see what. I said, no, hold on till we get to the house. Wait till we get to the house. So we got to the house. We carried them inside into the living room. And I said, now, what do you think's in those bags? And they said, well, we don't know. And I said, well, what do you, what do you, what do you, what, what would you think if it was the answers to your prayers? Yeah. I mean, what if this is God 
answering your prayers. You've asked him for clothing. Maybe this is clothing he sent you. And so they put the bags in the middle of the floor and they begin to pull those items out. There was the blouse, size and color. There was the pants, size and color. And I watched those children, 12 years of age, 11 years of age, tears running down their face as they said, God answers prayers. Amen. And he didn't have to wear those checkered pants every day. <laughs> Amen. But I'm telling you, God's, a, God's a, a, a mighty, mighty, mighty God. He wants to do for those who are obedient. You see, to walk in obedience gets your prayers answered. And so if you walk in disobedience, of course, you, you forfeit all of that. You, you don't have any claim upon the promises of God because uh, he only holds those, holds those promises out to people who are uh, walking according to his will. And uh, so sometimes we can get all puffed up, you know, and think we're something. And if we do some self-examination, we need to really get some things right in our life. I think I told this, but the, this preacher, he was, he was pretty full of himself. He thought he was somebody. And uh, he thought one day, well, you know, those people down at the nursing home, they, they need somebody like me to come in and be a blessing to them. They need somebody like me to come and just sort of shake their hands and all. And they'd be, they'd, be, they'd be blessed to have me to come. And so he goes to the nursing home, and as he starts in, uh, he goes in the door, and there's a little lady sitting right inside the door there. Just in, and so he stopped, and he said, hello, how are you? She just stared at him. He said, you doing all right today? She just stared at him. He said, you know who I am? She just stared at him. Well, he went on down the hall, made some other visits. Well, next week, he went back, did the same thing. He walks in there. She sits in that chair, and he said, uh, hello there. She just stares at him. How you doing today? She just stares at him. You know who I am? She just stares at him. On down the hall he went. Next week, same thing. He comes in, but he, he thinks, well, I'm not even going to waste time for her. So there she sits, but he starts past her, and as he gets past her, she said, hey! He said, what? She said, do you ever figure out who you are? <laughs> oh, what knock the wind out of yourselves, won't it? When you, when you think you're somebody, I'm telling you, it don't take much for the Lord to put you, put, you, put that pride in its place, amen? We are somebody in Christ. Brother. In Christ, that's in right. Christ. Brother, Hello. Hello. You're right. Joshua chapter 3, if you will, please, for our scripture reading tonight. Joshua chapter 3. And I, and I know you know this, the Word of God is... The most important book in your life. If you neglect it, then you're like so many thousands and thousands and thousands of others who are wandering down blind alleys and bumping into walls and making a lot of bad mistakes and living with a lot of regret because you don't have any, you don't have any direction. You don't have any leadership. Uh, the Word of God is, is our roadmap. It is our instruction book. And, and uh, yet so many people uh, neglect the Word of God. They would rather watch television or read a book or uh, play video games or whatever the case is. And, and, uh, and the Bible, of course, is picked up, if it's picked up, uh, to carry to the house of God. And, but it's the most important book in your, in your life. I would encourage you if you haven't already, if you've been saved more than a year, you should have already been able to read the Bible through at least one time. At least one time. And if you try a little more harder, then you can read it through two and three times a year and, and uh, without any difficulty whatsoever. If I asked Christians constantly, I said, can you tell me, have you ever read the Bible through? Well, no. I like the New Testament. Well, that's that's wonderful. The New Testament is good, but the Old Testament don't neglect it. So many wonderful truths in the in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, they they all.
all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Yes, it is. Yeah. And is profitable. And, uh, and so let me encourage you, if you don't read the Bible, let me encourage you to start. I start today and uh, read you a few chapters a day. And, and uh, of course, you can mark them off as you go through if you'd like. But, but, uh, but you'll find great benefit. As a matter of fact, uh, the Word of God is, my, is a lamp unto my feet. And it's a light unto my path. So, so many people, you, you see them bumping into walls and going down blind alleys and making a lot of bad mistakes. And, and it's obvious that they do not know what the Bible teaches. Joshua chapter 3, for those who can and will, if you'll stand with us, please, for the Word of God. Joshua chapter 3. Look with me at verse 14. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan. And the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in heat very far from the city of Adam. And it's besides Zeratan. And, and, and those that came down from the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jordan. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. And God's people said? Amen. Amen. Thank you. May be seated, if you will, please. So I said this book is the most important book in your life, and, and this book declares unto us the will of God. It, from Genesis to Revelation, it, is, it, is, it tells us plainly what God desires and wants for us. Now, first and foremost, of course, God wants us to uh, know him in salvation. He, he wants every man, woman, and boy, and girl on the face of this earth to be born again. It is not God's will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. God's will is not for anybody to go to hell. Now, hell exists, and hell is going to be filled with people who are uh, Christ rejectors, and, and, but that's not the will of God. God has... God has over and over and over extended invitation after invitation to individuals through the Holy Spirit. No man can come to the Spirit, except, uh, come to the Father, except the Spirit draw him. Uh, he says over and over, let us, uh, you know, let us hear as he invites us to come. And, and so over and over, God is saying to us, I, I don't want you. I don't want you to go to hell. I I don't want you to to spend one one moment in hell. I want you to become one of my children. That's God's will. Yes. Somebody say Amen right there. Amen, amen brother. Amen. But then, as you go on through the Word of God, you'll find it's the it's the will of God for people to be faithful to the house of God. Now, it's obvious a lot of people are living out of the will of God because. Uh, they're home on Sunday mornings. They're uh, shopping on Sunday mornings. They're fishing on Sunday mornings. They're hunting on Sunday mornings. And, and, and those people who miss the church on a regular basis of that nature are living out of the will of God. God's will. He said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more uh, as you see the day approaching. But, but he wants us to... He wants us to be obedient to his will. Uh, and then as you go on through the scriptures, you'll find that he gives instructions about finances and raising children and, and who to marry and not to marry. You see, you don't have to pray about if it's God's will for you to marry an unsaved man or unsaved girl. You don't have to pray about that. You know it's not God's will for you to marry an unsaved person. Amen. His word tells you don't be unequally yoked together. With an unbeliever. Amen. Uh, what fellowship has light and darkness? And, and, uh, and, and, and so, you know, you get down the road and, and here's a person who's saved and, 
and, and here's a person who's lost, and the lost person, their father is the devil. Mm. And after a while, you're going to have trouble with your father-in-law. That's right. Mm. Amen to that. And, and so it's the will of God for you to marry uh, believers. You don't have to pray about that. You don't have to pray, Lord, uh, should I marry this person? Not marry? They're nice. They're kind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If they're unbelievers, then God says you don't, you don't yoke up with them. Again, somebody say amen right there. Uh, you don't have to pray about whether to uh, drink uh, uh, liquor or not. I mean, the Bible's clear about that. It tells you, uh, see, we're living in a day where, where it, is, it is in vogue and, and uh, accepted by church people to drink in moderation. Well, when you come through the book of Proverbs, it's, it, is, it is quite plain where it says you don't even look at it. Because that's where it starts. You're drawn to it by looking at it. And, and because he says once you get caught up in that thing, you're going to say things and do things and, 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 and be ashamed of things that you've done uh, as a result of it taking over in your life. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to pray about whether to drink or not drink. Uh, you, you don't have to pray about whether to watch pornography or not. The Bible says if you, if you look on a woman to lust after her, then you've committed adultery already in your heart. So those are things you don't pray about. You know what the will of God is when it comes to You don't have to ask the preacher. You don't have to ask the deacon. You just say, Lord, I, I know what your word says, and I'm going to be obedient to it, and you live in the will of God. And so you, 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 you study the word of God so you can find what God desires and then, and then you obey that that God desires. And in my 55 years of walking with the Lord, I've, I've come to this place and I've seen, well, Lord, I, I see where you want me to change this. I'm not doing this right. And so I surrender it to him and let him have it and, and, uh, and try to be obedient in his will. I guess what I'm saying to you is this. The wise man, the wise woman on a daily basis, will look up toward heaven and say, thy will be done. Mm. Not my will. See, that's, that's where the battle comes in. I mean, we, we want to do it our way in our time, and, 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 and so the battle is there. But, but God will help us if we're willing to say to him, thy will be done. I want you to have your will in my life. I want you to direct my life. I want you to empower my life. I want you to show me what to do, and I'll be obedient. I'll not be a rebel. I'll not be like Jonah. And, and so, thy will be done. And a person who says that then can claim rights to the promises of God. You, you can claim the right to answers to prayer on a daily basis. It's not God's will that you go weeks and months and years without answers to prayer. God wants you to get prayers answered on a regular basis. And I'm not just talking about, Lord, give me traveling mercies, and that's wonderful to pray that. But I'm talking about where you pray for definite things, like I talked about the clothing a while ago. God wants you to have definite answers to prayer. That's the will of God. He, he said that, ask and you shall receive. It's the will of God for you to have, to have peace. I, I get so weary of hearing the word stressed. I'm telling you, I'm so stressed out. Yeah. I'm telling you, those kids, those, yeah. those animals that I, I you know. Yeah, preach uh, it, brother. Mercy, right. me. Preach it, brother. I mean, we're soldiers, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Got a bad hair day. That stresses me out. Mercy. But it's the will of God for us to have peace that passes all understanding. It's the will of God for us to have joy that, that, that is unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah. If you have the joy of the Lord, then you have strength. If you don't have the joy of the Lord, then you don't have the strength to come to church. You don't have the strength to read your Bible. You don't have the... You, 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 are, you are zapped of any kind of spiritual... Uh, ability to do anything. And so, so it is the will of God for you to have uh, answers to prayer, you, peace that pass all, all understanding, uh, joy unspeakable. It, it's the will of God for you to 
to walk in victory. It is not God's will for you to be up and down and cold and hot. I've told this story, but I, it's one of my favorite stories. Let me tell it for those who hadn't heard it. Had a had a lady that uh, I, I hadn't been saved long, maybe two or three months. We're having our first revival. Right in the middle of the revival, I think on Tuesday night, this, this lady is sitting about midway back here on to the right. And right in the middle of the message, right in the middle of the sermon, she jumps up out of her pew and she runs out into the aisle and down to the altar and she is wailing. She is, uh, you can hear her all over the building crying and praying and, 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 and repenting and getting right. And, and when she got up, she said, I want you to know I've been out of the will of God all this past year, but I've gotten right today. Well, I'm a new convert. That excited me. I thought, hey, man, I like this. But she didn't come back to church on Sunday. She came the next night, next night. But she didn't come Sunday. She didn't come Wednesday. She didn't come the next Sunday. She didn't come the whole next year. Next year, I have revival again. There she sits. Same scenario. I mean, right in the middle of the message, up and out of her seat, out into the aisle, down she runs, falls in the altar, and she's wailing. And then, and when she gets through, she said, I'm telling you, I've been out of the will of God for a whole year, but I got right tonight. Well, I didn't get as excited about it this time. Because I knew that wasn't the will of God. I hadn't been saved long, but I knew it wasn't the will of God for that woman to be in and out and cold and hot and defeated like that. That doesn't bring honor to the Lord. No, no way. That doesn't, that doesn't manifest who he is and his power. But she didn't come back to church the next Sunday or the next Wednesday or the next Sunday. But the next year, she's there again. It's like a bad movie. <laughs> Same scenario about Tuesday, Wednesday. Up and out of her seat, into the aisle. Down she comes, falls in the altar. She's wailing. I'm and she said, I'm telling you, I've been out of the will of God for a whole year, but don't you know I got right tonight? And, and I said, Lord, just zap her right there. <laughs> Just kill her right there. And she'll go out of here victorious. I mean, she'll be right and she'll go out of here right, but he's more patient than I am. He didn't do it. The fourth year, I'm preaching. And I see her. And I thought, I'm going to do my best to help this little lady. You say, do you do that? Oh, yeah. If I know you're guilty of something, and the Lord lays it on my heart, I'm going to preach it. I'm not going to back away from it. I, I want to try to help you. Amen. And I said to that congregation, including her, I said, you know, if you just do the basics, if you stay in church faithfully, if you have yourself a prayer closet, if you read the Word of God on a regular basis, keep sin out of your life. I'm telling you, just the little ABCs of the Christian life, you will walk in victory and you won't be backslidden yes. all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Preach it, brother. Well, I started pastoring, didn't see her for about 20 years. We're having homecoming. We are packed. We got chairs down the aisle. We got chairs up and down the aisle. We got chairs right up to right up to the altar, right there. I mean, they're right up to the altar. I came to the pulpit, get ready to preach, and there she sits. I thought, well, now that's convenient. <laughs> she won't have to walk the whole aisle. She just fall in there and get it done one more year. But she sprang from her seat and, and up on the platform, grabbed me up in a bear hug, and, and she's swinging me around. She said, I love you. I, love. I said, ma'am, I, I put me down. <laughs> she said, but I love you. I said, ma'am, don't be hugging up on me like that. My wife's the one that does that. And she put me down, and she said to that audience, let me tell you why I love him. She said, 20 years ago, he preached to me. 
and told me if I'd get in church in the Bible and prayer closet, I'd, I'd walk in victory. She said, I've been living the victorious life for yeah. 20 years. Amen. See, that's the will of God. It is not God's will for us to be up and down and in and out and cold and hot and, 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 and backslidden about half of our life. And, 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 and so, so God tells us what his will is. And so many of us in this room, we, we try to live according to the will of God. We, we try to be as close to him as we possibly can. But sometimes, even when we, when we own purpose, try to stay close to him. Sometime there comes a tough spot in life. Now that's what our story is about here. We got, we got the children of Israel who have been following the Lord. I mean, they have stayed close to it. They've not turned off on this road. They've not gone up this trail. Uh, they have followed him. They, they are where they are because God has led them there. Make sure you understand that. He has led them to where they are. And, and here they come to this, to, this, to this Jordan River. Not on their own accord. Not of their own choosing. In the will of God. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? In the will of God. But now God's will is across the river. Jericho is God's will. Ai is God's will. Canaan land is God's will. Yes, sir. But how in the world are they going to get there when they've got this Jordan River that usually is about 100 feet wide? They tell us during this time, during the harvest, it was about a mile wide. So, so it wasn't just a problem. It was a huge problem that was keeping them from getting over to the over to the will of God in their life, how are they going to get Jericho? How are they going to get Ai? How are they going to get Canaan land? Because this Jordan River stands between them and the will of God. And we've all been there. We've stayed close to the Lord. We've, we've not gotten where we are because we've wandered off. We've followed him we've stayed close to him we're in the will of god and yet we come to this this barrier this obstacle this thing that is that is keeping us from getting where god wants us to go now we got about four choices when we get to that place and i know you've all been there i mean you you've stayed close to the lord and 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 you know that this god's will across yonder but but how are you going to get there? And you got four choices. You can, you can first of all, stand here and, and 